As you pause mid-climb to catch your breath, you'd swear you can hear a heartbeat pulsing deep within the mountain. Hello everyone, my name is Elspeth, you're watching the Planeswalker Pantheon today. We're opening up a set box of Commander Legends Dungeons and Dragons Battle for Baldur's Gate. Anyways, after that incredibly long title, let's open this, shall we? Alright, so I believe this, these set boxes are a little smaller than normal, normal ones. I can't quite recall the sizes offhand, but eh, let's get into it. So we've got, whoops, I just tore the box, that's alright. got a beautiful Minsk and Boo fighting for Truth and Justice. And of course we've got a lovely little Boo pouncing out. I believe that these are the same size as normal set, uh, set packs, so we shouldn't have any real issues there. Alright, so we got our art card. Our basic. We've got some old art cards and the way there's a bit of oh, so a common and an uncommon and we'll flick through the rest. Oh, we've got our first one. We've got Gorion Wise Mentor, so for green, white, and blue, you get a legendary creature human wizards, a fairy full of vigilance. Whenever you cast an adventure spell, you may copy it, you may choose new targets for the copy. We have our background. Ooh, we have an etched for Coral Sea Scale Singer. We have a Baba Lisaga Night Witch. So for one black and green, you get a legendary creature human warlock. It's a 3 3. Tap, sacrifice up to three permanents. If there are three or more card types among the sacrificed permanents, each opponent loses three life. You gain three life and you draw three cards. And we have a four. Oh, there. Oh, we've got a card from this, a Crimson Muck Raider. So for a 1 and a red, you get a creature with the 2 1. It gets plus 1 plus 1 as long as you control Swamp, and you can pay 2 and a black to regenerate it. This is actually from when I first started playing. I opened like a single core 13 pack before really settling into play at around uh, Return to Ravnica. So it's always a little bit of a memory for me personally. Alright, so we've got another art card right here. Got our all four around this time. Got a couple of cards in the rule book frame. There's Lulu there. We will flick through the commons and uncommons. We, uh, we have a red here. It's Miriam Sentinel Worm. So for three green, blue, and red, you get a legendary creature dragon spirit. Six six of flying and ward two. Whenever another non token dragon enters the battlefield on your control, create a token that's a copy of it. Except the token isn't legendary if that dragon is legendary. I have a background. We have ooh, an etched foil of Glunch the Bestower. So for one green and white, you get a legendary creature jellyfish. It's an 05 with flying. The beginning of your end step, choose a player. They may they put two plus one plus one counters on a creature they control. Choose a second player to draw a card, and then choose a third player to create two treasure tokens. We have an Eldritch Pact. So for six and a black, you get a sorcery. Tag a player draws X cards and loses X life, but X is the number of cards in their graveyard. We have a four for our cockerel and we've got a game of mimic match. And uh, put the game right there. Next one up. Oh got the art card for Lulu. Our land. We have Commander Leo Porter as our old frame card. Click through the commons. Click through the uncommons. We have Diana Invoker Adept. So for two blue, red, and white, you get a legendary creature here in Wizards, a full full of haste. You may activate abilities of other creatures you control as though they're creatures. Of the, as all those creatures had haste. Tap when you when you activate the next ability this turn by spending four more mana to activate it. Copy that ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. We have a Cult of the Absolute, so for a single black or legendary enchantment, it's a background. Command of creatures you own, get plus three, plus three, and have flying, death, death touch, and ward with pay three life. And at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature. We have an Etrel Ganax, Astral Hunter. Ooh, I believe this is a card from the Commander deck, if I'm not mistaken, or it's another, 
There's a counter card from the set. Sculpted Samba, so if the 32 bleed, choose a, it's a sorcery. You choose a creature you control, then each opponent chooses a creature they control with equal or lesser power. If you chose a creature this way, exile each creature this way, not chosen by any player this way. And a four young blue dragon and an ox. Uh, token, I guess. <laughs> Next one up. Got our art card. Got our old art frames. And we will flick through the rest of these. Oh, we have an etched art Diana Invoker Adept. We've got a mythic, we've got Elemister's Simulacrum, so for 4 and 2 big and instant. For each opponent, you create a token that's a copy of up to one target creature that player controls. We have a foil swamp and a soldier. Next up. Of course, we love these art cards. Got our island. Got old heart frame, and we'll flick through all of these. We have oh, an etched foil acolyte of Bahamut, and our rare is Call to the Void. So for four and a black, it a sorcery. Each player secretly chooses a creature they control and a creature they don't control. Then those choices are revealed. Destroy each creature chosen this way. I'm going to lure Merry Thief and a, another little game. Next one up. Our art card, I believe this is that Kindred card, I can't remember the name of it offhand. We have our planes, our old art cards, and we'll flick through all of these. Oh, our rare is Bane, Lord of Darkness. So for one white, blue, and black, you know, legendary creature god to 5-2. As well as the life total is less than or equal to half your starting life total, Bane has indestructible. Whenever another turn token creature you control dies, target opponent may have you draw a card. If they don't, you may put a creature card with equal or lesser toughness from your hand onto the battlefield. We have, can keep surge. Oh, we have... Jahira, friend of the forest, in our ed as our edge for So for two and a green, you get a legendary creature, human elf druid. Uh, tokens you control have tapped to add green, and you choose a background. We also have a nine from this keen. So for one black, green, and blue, you get a legendary creature, human rogue. It's a four four with menace. Ward, pay nine life. Whenever keen um, deals combat damage to a player, look at the top nine cards of your library. You may put a gate card from them onto the battlefield. Then if you control nine more gates, put the rest into your hand, otherwise put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. We have a foil stone speaker crystal, and we have the initiative slash undercity. Next one up. Kindred summons, that's what it is. Got our art card, got our basic, our alternate art card, and we will flick through these. Always nice to have more command towers in the world, other than, rather than waiting for commander decks to print them. Now, got our uncommons. Got our rare. This is War Blade of Frontiers. So for one in a red, you get a legendary creature, human warlock. It's a 1-1. One, one. If you'd roll one or more dice, instead roll that many dice plus one and ignore the lowest roll. Whenever you roll one or more dice, put a plus one, plus one counter on War Blade of Frontiers and you choose a background. We have a Sword Coast Sailor as our etched for. Oh, we've also got a alternate art Zelvor Eltrul Exile. So for one blue, and blue, black, and red, you get a legendary creature of Tiefling Warrior. It's a 4 2 with haste. Two and tap when you cast your next instant or sorcery spell that targets a single permanent of, or a single permanent. This turn, uh, an opponent controls this turn. For each other opponent, choose that player or permanent they control. Copy that spell and the copy targets the chosen player or permanent. That's really neat, actually. And we've got a Sword Coast Serpent and a Dargon. Always love a Dargon. There's nothing like a good Dargon. Next one up. Again, another art card. Planes. 
our uh, rules book artworks and we'll flick through our other cards here and we've got a Bubba and Saga Night Witch in the Etched Foil Oh, and we've got a spy gun. So when it enters the battle, it enters the battle for tapped unless you have two more opponents. And a normal foil, Safina Comport. Cut through. Oh, we've got a Krenko King's Tin Strike Kingpin. Well, uh, uh, where the spark, huh? Two in the red legendary coaches. The gold ones are one, two. When it enters, when it attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. And create a number of plus one, one red goblin creature tokens to Krenko's power. That's nice. That's some good memories there. Ah, uh, Cranko. I had some good fun with that. Ah, oh, there's a little elephant there. Island. We've got our uh, rules book cards. Let's look through all our commons and uncommons. A Master Chef as our etched foil. We have a Horn of Valhalla, so for one and a wagon artifact equipment, it can be called an adventure of Izard Korb for X and two white. You get a sorcery adventure. Uh, create X one one white soldier creature tokens, and then equip creature. It's plus one plus one for each creature you control, and you can equip it for three. Got our foil Makonod and a copy token. Next one up. Our wonderful art card. We've got our uh, rule book art, alternate arts. Look through the rest of these. Oh, we got Minsk and Boo, Timeless Heroes. So for two red and a green, your legendary plans will come Minsk. It's Starts at three loyalty. When Minsk and Boo Thomas Heroes enters the battlefield and at the beginning of your upkeep, you may create Boo, a legendary 1 1 red hamster creature token with trample and haste. Plus one, put three plus one plus one cannons on up to one target creature with trample or haste. Minus two, sacrifice a creature. When you do, Minsk and Boo Thomas Heroes is X damage to any target where X is that creature's power. If the sacrifice creature was a hamster, draw X cards, and Minsk and Boo Thomas Heroes can be your commander. God. Oh, we've got a caldera of the call of the small in our etched foil. Oh, we also have an intellect devourer. So for three and a black yet a creature horror, it's a two four. It has devour intellect. When intellect devourer enters the battlefield, each opponent exiles a card from their hand until intellect devourer leaves the battlefield. And body thief, you may play lands and cast spells from among cards exiled with intellect devourer. If you cast a spell this way, you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast. And another Master Chef. Oh, we have the Vero's Journal too. That's a pretty neat token to get my hands on. I do want to see one of the bunny tokens though. Next one up. Or Caldera. Oh, this is a Mothic. I've actually fought one of these in my DD campaign. Or oh, came across one at least. Got our land. We've got our uh, alt. Our rule book frame art cards. We will flick through our commons and uncommons. Oh, always good to have more arcane signets. Our rare is Rakadaga Gorgat's boss. So for two red and green, you get a legendary creature human ball. Each creature you control with a mana ability gets plus two plus two. Whenever a creature you control with a mana ability attacks, untap it. It's a four four as well. Whenever you cast a spell, if at least seven mana spent to cast it, untap target creature, gets plus seven plus seven and gains tremble until end of turn. We have a Feywild Visitor in the etched art. We also have Ravenloft Adventurer, so it, for three and a black, you get a creature, human, rogue, assassin, it's a 3-4. When it enters the battlefield, you take initiative. If a creature an opponent controls would die, ex instead of exile and put a hit counter on it. Whenever Ravenloft Adventurer attacks, if you've completed a dungeon, defending player loses one life for each card they own ex in exile with a hit counter on it. And if we all run away together. And a boar! Alright, next up. We have, of course, our art card, our 
planes. We have our rule book cards. We will flick through all of these. Oh, flaming fist in the etched foil. We have Ascend from Avernus, so for X and Triple White you get a sorcery. Return of Creature and Planeswalker cards with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Exile Ascend from Avernus. We also have Asterion the Descendant. For Black and White we have a legendary creature, Vampire Elf Rogue. It's a 4 4 with Death Touch and Life Link. At the end of your end step, choose one. Feed, target opponent loses life equal to the amount of life they lost this turn. And Friends, you gain life equal to the amount of life you gained this turn. Ooh, 4 Command Tower. Nice. And a little game to match. Next on up. Ooh, um, Skeleton Beholder. Got a Planes. Ooh, a Rule Book Lightning Bolt. And Coral Sea Scale Singer. We'll flick through all these commons and uncommons. Oh, we have Mazzy True Word Paladin. So for one red, green, and white, get a legendary creature, like Heart Filling Lights, a 3 4. Whenever an enchanted creature attacks one of your opponents, it gets plus 2 plus 0 and gains trample until end of turn. Whenever an aura you control is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, exile it until the end of your next turn, you may cast that card. Sign of Halastar. Oh, etched for Ab Abadal Adrian. We have. Oh, oh, no, that's not from the thing. This is the Shameless Shark. Shameless Charlatans, it's a legend for one of the blue, you get a legendary enchantment background. Command of creatures you own have two and a blue, this creature becomes a copy of another target creature. Ooh, and a white plume uh, adventurer in foil. So for two and a white, you get a creature orc cleric, it's a 3 3. When it enters the battlefield, you take the initiative. At the beginning of each opponent's untap, upkeep, untap a creature you control. If you've completed a dungeon, create untap all creatures you control instead. One thing I'm a little upset about, and this is just probably a minor gripe to most, but this is my gripe. The fact that they didn't include all of the AFR dungeons as part of the dungeon choice. They just went with the initiative and having the under the underdark or the undercity. I get it, it's Baldur's Gate. You want to stay specific to Baldur's Gate, but come on, they could have used all the dungeons. They went th they made three other really cool dungeons. Got our art card, our island, our Alt art frames. We'll flick through our commons and uncommons. And we've got an etch for Wilson Def uh, Refined Grizzly. He's a good boy. And we have the Council of Four. So for three white and blue, get a legendary creature, human noble. It's a zero eight. Whenever a player draws their second card during eight. During their turn, you draw a card. Whenever a player casts a second spell during their turn, you create a 2 2 white knight creature token. We have a normal 4 oil alt frame, a uh, Viconia Drow Apostate, and the initiative. But yeah, the, the Dungeons and Dragons set was released during the pandemic. I kind of wish that all the dungeons were made available, not just the, um, the Underdark, but that's just me. Another art card. Got the forest. We have our old frames. We've got our commons. We've got our uncommons. We have Alundra the Seer. So for in our as an etch well. So for two green or blue, get a three five legendary creature human shaman. Tap, draw a card, then exile a card from your hand and put a number of time counters on it equal to its mana value. It gains when the last time counter is removed from this card. If it's exiled, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. If you cast a creature spell this way, it gains haste until end of turn. Then remove a time counter from the, from each ca other card you own in exile. So this is kind of a suspend. That's a neat way to do it. We have... Uh, this is from the... No, it isn't. Uh, this is from the main set. This is Gale's Redirection. So for 3 and 2 blue, you get an instant. Exile target spell, then level D20, and add that spell's mana value. 1 through 14, you may cast the exile card for as long as it remains exiled, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast it. And if you get 15, 15 plus, you may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost for as long as it remains exiled. We also have another Mazzy. And a team at semantics. Ooh, we have Light of Day. It's an enchantment for a three and a white. Black, black creatures can't attack or block. 
Real interesting there to have that as part of a list. Next one up. Got our art card, our basic, we've got our old art, our old frame cards of Wilson and Moss Diamond. And we will just jump straight to the rare. It's actually an etched foil noble heritage. So for one little white, get a legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures you own have. When this creature um, enters the battlefield and at the beginning of your upkeep, each player may put two plus one plus one counters on a creature they control. For each opponent who does, you gain protection from that player until your next turn. We will have a mythic, it's a uh, majestic genesis, so for 6 and 2 green, you get a sorcery. Reveal the top X cards of your library, where X is the greatest mana value of a commander you own on the battlefield or in the command zone. You may put any number of permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Have a foil and so Oh, we've got a Chandra Nala, this is actually, I believe this is the original art, it might be from a Planeswalker deck from before then, I actually do not remember. So, for 3 and 2 rare, you get a Planeswalker Chandra, starts at 6 loyalty, plus 1, now Chandra Nile deals 1 damage to target player, minus X, Chandra deals uh, X damage to target creature, minus 8, Chandra deals 10 damage to target player, and each creature he or she controls. That's a real interesting list card, I must say. Man, old Chandras used to be genuinely bad. Just... Like, I think about Chandra Torture Defiance and Sha and uh, Dress to Kill these days, and man, all Chandra's are awful. Got our art card and our land. Got our old uh, frame card there. We will flick through all the commons. Flick through the uncommons. We have Bane, Lord of Darkness, which I believe we read before. We have a Master Chef. We have an etched foil Nine Fingers King. And we have an Altar of Baal. So for one and a black, you get an artifact. Uh, you can cast Burn Offering for two and a black, which is a sorcery adventure. Create a tapped for one black skeleton creature token with menace. And for two and a black and tap, exile a creature you control. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery. And a foil draconic lore. But then. So I just think, and this is actually our last pack. Jeez, this has gone real quick. Next, I just realized this is the last card. Alright. Oh, we've got a signed Nothic. Got our old heart card. Click through the commons. Click through the uncommons. And we've got a, another Grunch of the Bestower. We've got a Vicona Drow Apostate in the Edge Toil. We have an Illithid Harvester. So for four and a blue, you get a Creature Horror. You can pay X and two blue to plant tadpoles. Tap X target creatures. They don't untap during their controller's next untap steps. And for, and it has Ceremorphosis. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, turning any number of target tapped non-token creatures face down, they're two, two horrors. And we have a foil of your temples under attack. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share, favorite, and subscribe. It lets people know that we exist and that we're making content. You can follow me on Twitter. Links are down below. And you can also find us at the Planeswalker Pantheon on Facebook. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.